ere mo adowo o so ki na yi tene ni ene yi tere mo adowo o so ki na yi tene ni ise na ne ni kokuno eni ka me we gbe ya this is Catherine also about Samuel Long John. I'm a native, I'm born in uh, Degema and married to a bunny man. I was trained at uh, River State University of Science and Technology as a secretary. I graduated as a secretary, worked at different places like Sunray Publication, initially, anyway. I worked with uh, Pabot Breweries and later joined the uh, Sunray publication. I don't know how many people know about uh, these companies now because they are moribund and then uh, other have, uh, activities have taken over their environment. Nevertheless, when you call the name Pabot Breweries, Pabot Breweries is synonymous with the uh, River State. That's the main five divisions that made up reversed it in creation as per 1967 and uh, up to a period when they started you know creating local governments thereafter i left the office work to a, a, a personal uh, business uh, uh, outfits struggled to do one thing or the other i've been into same profession i've been into uh, baking profession and so on and so forth and the time came we we had a, a hotel business and uh, from the hotel business it was a uh, change to a school and within this period I'm now more into the educational profession than any other uh, by God's special grace I was uh, challenged as somebody before this time, there was no school, but I felt I should improve myself. And uh, from HND Sec Admin, I went to do a postgraduate diploma in education. There and then, uh, Dietams International Schools was uh, born. Uh, in order to enhance my capability to run the school, I went in for a master's degree in educational management. So far, Daytime International Schools is 25 years in existence. By Thursday, the 21st of September, we, we hope to go and mark it in the house of God to tell God thank you for establishing Daytime and uh, sustaining it for the past 25 years. Within the period, by God's special grace, so many children have graduated at the primary level and now even at the secondary we've had our ninth graduation ceremony and the results have been very wonderful through this period god has used the school to impact on so many lives mold and remold children that wherever they go they stand as the best of ambassadors to jtams international schools as an educationist, I tell you, it's not easy. If you are a teacher in any school, it's a different ball game than you uh, trying to get people to work for you. It's not easy to manage children, to manage parents, to manage staff. But in all, God has been very faithful. That through the initial takeoff, of about uh, 22 children. God has been growing the children and above all, giving us committed staff. You'll be surprised that some of our staff are as old as the school. You know, we are talking of 25 years in existence and uh, to the glory of God, we have staff that have uh, been with us for these 25 years. Even there are parents whose children from the pre-nursery or the crutch have passed through the uh, primary and even secondary uh, because of the standard they came and met. So in all, God has been very faithful. 
The Holy Spirit is the one giving us the guidance and directions and when anything he drops in our spirit is uh, implemented, everybody applaud it and to the glory of God it has been very wonderful. Actually, when I graduated as a, a secretary, working with Pablo Brewers, I worked with the gem of Pablo Brewers at the inception in 1983. And uh, during this period, uh, as a secretary, is, it's, it's on the table of the secretary, administration starts. Because people send in applications for one thing or the other, whatever you want to get in an organization, we send in an application and it goes to the secretary set table who you know kinds of collate them and then you know be able to distribute them according to the content of the uh, letters that you receive. Over time I came to realize that most of the people that send letters when you try to read the letters like uh, you can't even understand some of them can't even write a, a formal official letter, you know, very well. In those days I know, of my training at uh, UST, there are certain things you type or you write and the lecturer will tell you that this is not believable and you will just tear it before you. And I was wondering, many of them still pass through that school. I said, I wonder, I said, ah, is it not the same group of people that thought over time those who had been uh, re uh, retired and the other, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, the t people that we are going into the school, we are not really going to learn how come that a graduate will not be able to, you know, put in a letter, just a formal letter. That kind of, that, you know, triggered my, my zeal. I started thinking of God, how I can get a school to train people from the way I was trained so that at the end of the day they should be able to <laughs> express themselves on paper and wherever they go to. So that had been on my mind but uh, along the line we now started a hotel business. So during this hotel business period, you know, most times when God I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit, when I go to the hotel business, I look at people coming in, you see one man, one woman carrying a bag coming in, I start to wonder, what are, are these people, are they really husband and wife? What are they coming to do? You know, that kind of a thing. So a time came, I started putting it into prayers. I said, God, this kind of business, me, I can't see myself, you know, being around this kind of uh, environment that you don't even know what the people that come to lodge in, in the hotel do. So God, who has time for everything, a time came and uh, I had the chat with my husband. In those days too, just as we are experiencing this uh, fuel and all the rest, there was very high scarcity of uh, gas, of uh, uh, fuel and all the rest. So when we went in the hotel, you know, the ACs must be working to almost 24 hours because nobody would be in your uh, hotel room if there is no light, if there is, if AC is not working. So along the line, uh, one day I went and shared my experience of how the uh, staff went to look for diesel, they went to look for gas and they could not find how they were being beaten at different ends by police and all the rest. So <laughs> my husband just said, okay, that this school thing, enough is enough. And that was how we closed the hotel business and started from the scratch to establish Thetams International Schools. Well, actually, uh, <laughs> talking about music, to me too, at any time I remember, I laugh because I can't even imagine. All I knew about music was that as a growing child, which every one of us, you know, had the experience. You are a member of your local choir in your villages. I don't know if you were, but for me, I was a, a member of my local choir, St. Bass Church, the Gema. And uh, after that, I had nothing to do with uh, uh, singing as such, except when I go to church. Uh, when we, I came over on marriage and uh, I worship with St. Prince, I really thought of joining the choir again. But here in Port Harcourt, the period they do a choir practice is in the evenings. So it wasn't giving me 
time as a married woman with uh, children. So I forgot about it. But it, what happened was that when data was supposed to be born, there was a consultant we contacted because I was not a co teacher from the onset. Like I mentioned, I was a secretary and all the rest. So the consultant now told me that, Madam, you have to have an anthem. I said, What do you mean by anthem? He said, I don't know. I said, It's good. You must have an anthem. Sarcastically, he left. So one of the days when we are trying to convert the hotel rooms to classroom, I sat by the corner of uh, the dining uh, area when it was hotel. Uh -huh. So from there, something just entered into my spirit. That is uh, uh, anthem. You can do it. And then from there, I just started. Dear Tams is the name of the school. So how would it go? I just so I just you know started getting something coming out of me. The times, the times, the times. God's doing is good. God has given us a new vision. That is God's will for us. The times, the times, the times. He sweet us to accomplish if the good thing that he started that will give him glory. I was so excited. I said, ah, how did this thing come about now? The music, the lyrics was flowing at the same time the tune. So I, I had it for three three stars, you know. Thereafter I left. But I later realized that from time to time, for example, there was a parent of the times that had a Thanksgiving after childbirth. So we joined them at the Thanksgiving service at Winners uh, uh, Chapel at Buloma. So while the man of God was preaching, the man was preaching about Thanksgiving. Why we should give thanks? That many of us will want heaven to fall before we know that God has done something for us to tell him thank you. I can't you think of how you were born? Can't you? In fact, the, 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 the message was so inspiring. And while the man was singing, the whole thing started burning on me. And I, I just looked around, I picked pen and paper. The words started coming. When I look back to where I am coming from, when I look back to where I am coming from, when I look back to where I am coming from, what can I give in exchange of love? And so on and so forth. I started wondering about the love of Christ, about the grace of God that has brought me thus far, about his mercies, and above all the peace he has given to me, you know, and so on and so forth. That is how, when I, looking back, came about. Thereafter, I noticed that I, I, in sleep, I was, as I woke up from sleep, and I was sleeping, and uh, I just realized as I was singing a song. So as I woke up, I just still had the song in my memory, and that was, There is no one like you, Jesus, there is no one like you. There is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. In heaven, there is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. On earth, there is no one like you, Jesus. There is no one like you. And so on and so forth. But these songs, I was just singing them on my own. Uh, one of them, so many of them. In fact, I have over 30 songs that God has dropped in my spirit. Sometimes I could be in the bedroom taking my bath. While one thing or the other, will, I don't know, I'll be thinking of one thing or the other before I know it, a song will just drop. Sometimes I'm having my quiet time, you know, with uh, the daily devotionals, especially our daily manner. That book is, that is the inspiration I've gotten from that book. Then uh, uh, daily power, uh, the scripture in you know, you know, daily power also. And uh, the one I also use daily fountain from my church, you know, I'm an Anglican, you know. So, but before you know, all these songs were coming, but I didn't take them for anything. Usually, when we have a program in the school, I will sing it. 
until 2019 when uh, I employed a music teacher by name David Sunday Akpa. So when he came in and uh, had these songs, he now called me aside and said, Ah, man, these songs, uh, you can get an album out of it. I said, David, please leave me. I'm not a musician. I've not uh, read music before. I've had nothing about music. So he said, no, that uh, we can do something out of it. So in fact, he was the one that, you know, catalyzed the, uh, the birth of uh, Ketela Orchestra. You know, and from there, at the time, time came, we developed seven out of the very many songs God has dropped in my spirit. To be all of them, I are here too. I don't know. <laughs> All of them are hit, is it? The one that, uh, it was uh, on that same uh, year, 2019, when uh, it was my birthday and we had our resumption fellowship. As I just entered the hall where we are having our fellowship, uh, everybody started saying, uh, Happy birthday, my happy birthday, my dear and dead. It's another birthday, it's another birthday, it is another birthday, it's another birthday, join me to celebrate, it's another birthday, join me to tell Jesus, thank you, it's another birthday, it came about. But uh, when I, anytime I sit and uh, I'm, you know, meditating over things, that there is nobody like God, no one to be compared all over the world. I think that's my 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 heart song or my heart uh, 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 music, if I should say. Yes. There is there is no one like him. Some people tell me it's a, uh, it's another birthday. Some people tell me looking back, that is when I look back to where I am coming from. Uh -huh. Looking back, some people tell me who am I. In fact, the average, a little elderly group of persons, because who am I, you know, m reminded me of my birth. Because from what my mother said, if not for the grace of God, either she would have died with me in the womb, or I would have died, or she would have died. It would have been a situation of saying, oh, the water poured, that the pot stood or that both the water and the pot, you know, uh, scattered and everything ended. So for me, who am I is another special one. But many of them have always said that at any point in time they think of things about their lives. They say, who am I? Well, over the period, in those days when I had my encounter, many people would always say, Pastor this, Pastor that. But I'm in a denomination that we don't, women don't, uh, are not ordained pastors, if not for situations that is happening now. But in the Anglican communion, the highest a woman can go is to be a lay leader. And uh, I've not been, I have not gotten that inspiration or that call to become a lay leader. But I desire, my desire is to affect life. That through this music, that's what God told me, in short. On the 6th of March, 2023, I was in the church for our, uh, you know, it was Easter period, and we had uh, our Latin service. And right there in the church, God reminded me that for 25 years he gave me this assignment so that I could use it to affect life. That through my music, people will hear it and be challenged to know who he is and uh, accept him as Lord and Savior. So that is my desire and that is my goal. That from time to time, he will create a situation where these songs will be sung and then particularly as many that will hear the song, that an aspect of it will touch them to repent and accept Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. My joy eh, and the roadmap is to getting people accepting Christ as their Lord and personal Savior through listening 
to the uh, the lyrics of my music. <laughs> it's all in the hands of the Almighty. I didn't know how this one came about. So at the appointed time, he will bring it about. The title of my album is Amazing Grace. <laughs> By God's special grace, I'm by God's special grace, I'm over 60. And uh, when this inspiration came, the number one challenge I had was my voice. And I was saying, ah, at this age, can I, how, will, how will my voice blend to be able to bring out a music people will listen to? But uh, I call him my manager, my director, that's uh, David Alpan. He gave me tips, uh, tips of how to, you know, suitun the voice, and uh, to the glory of God, even at this age, I was able to bring out the music. So, well, as far as God has programmed you for something, you know, when you talk of uh, time to bring out what you have inside of you, it's God that, you know, programs it. When He schedules, if He wants you to be whatever you want to be, irrespective of age. There's nothing that can stop it. And from this music, I have seen that even at 90, and I'm looking up to God to keep me alive, I will sing and uh, get people inspired and uh, repent and know who he is. Up to a, a period he would, you know, keep me, as long as he keeps me, that that ministry will blossom to the glory of his name. For the young boys, uh, like, I've always been a counselor to them in the school, you know, chatting, try to chart the right course for them. We are in a world where children these days have been taken over by the digital world. Everything they want to do, they think it, it has to be uh, internet, it has to be uh, social media, it has to be this and that. But they forget that without Christ, there's nothing anybody can do. So my advice is that as a growing child, we should be able to obey our parents, look up to God, and uh, work hard that at the end, God will bring about whatever the talent he has, you know, put in us. Now, as a performing artist, first and foremost, you should understand your calling. If you don't understand your calling, you think that uh, whatever you do is music. It's not just beating some people in the music world now. That is the, I don't know how you call it, the other side of music. You see people talk, uh, this and that, and then they take it to be music. But there is nothing, nothing serious people buy. That is to me, if you are somebody that you, you are conscious of God, you are conscious of rapture, you are conscious that there is a time to give account of your stewardship. Whatever you are doing, whether it is music or any other profession, you should know that God will call you to question. But we will see a world where today people say, some people say they are gospel musicians, but they go naked. Either they are, they are, they are the people they are using for the music, they are backups or they are dancers and all the rest. When they are dancing, it does not tally with the, the type of music they are singing. Or they want to a kind of situation where maybe people will be attracted. They, they play the music, dance the music to suit the world rather than suiting uh, the, the meaning of the music, which is uh, Christ-like uh, music, which the, the music that has been founded in Christ through the word of God. You are singing that same music, but the person dancing it, or the person following you around, has a different uh, 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 exposure or the disposition. That is, what you are singing does not run with what the people that are following you, you know, are doing. For example, uh, somebody is singing a, a music uh, that is supposed to be a gospel music, you see the person going to the church to kneel down or to pray in one form or the other, portraying a Christ-like music. But the people dancing are almost naked. 
I don't know how that, you know, match each other correctly. It's, it's very far from what the content of the music is. And even to the uh, circular music, you know, when the music is being sung, it should have uh, a kind of uh, an aim, a goal to reach. And it should be such that will affect the spirit for good, not for, you know, for people that think that it's only by drug, they can be high, they can be this, they can be that, they are missing the mark. All they need is just to surrender their lives to Jesus. And the type of nature they want will just come in, you know, effortlessly. Thank you, you GVOL TV, for having me on set. Uh, I want to also thank MC Tokandu for bringing G Voice TV. It has been wonderful having you around. <laughs>